Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the winner, the Dead 14 Days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 12th of August, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the SNGFS and ECM Ensembles, maybe on track of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video for September. It'll be quite interesting, and I shall get on with that for you in a moment to say that first a video already said was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We've also released Jeremy Friday as well. Check out those two videos if you'd like to see that. Like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much for doing that everyone. Right, we're starting off with a tropical Atlantic. We've got tan orange X uh, now, which is disturbance one and it has a 60% chance of cyclone formation. In the next two days, and a 90% chance, a very high chance, in the next seven days. So that looks like it's going to be our next tropical storm and or hurricane. And uh, I won't read all of that, <laughs> but uh, we've got uh, written down there. But it looks like that will be our next tropical storm and or hurricane. And we'll keep you updated. Of course we will. Right, centering temperature confirmed yesterday, of course, at 16.3. 0.3 of a degree above the 61 to 1990 average. August for the first day coming out in the 20s. Look at that. Big, big difference for August, but it's only one day in. 5.1 degrees above 61 to 1990 average at 20.8. I think the only way that can go over the next four weeks is downwards. But the question is, you know, how far downwards will that go? And uh, we'll know, of course, in about, I don't know, what is it, 29 days' time. These are the GFS upgrade temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We'll get Market Harbour today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Market Harbour. Uh, we're starting off above average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. It's going to tick down over the weekend, then lift back up for the early part of next week. That's associated with low pressure, though. Then ticking down, then ticking back up, all looking rather zonal or westerly, before maybe going more generally below average through the second uh, week of the month. That does last quite a lot of scatter, though, so you'll notice the thick green line, which is the GFS midnight operational run. That becomes very warm and or hot in the closing stages around the, mid uh, around the middle part of uh, August there. Precipitation wise, not going to be much rainfall now through the uh, next few days. The weekend, next week, looking mainly dry, but a few showers around at times, but a lot of dry weather. Our next sort of wet spell comes in around uh, Tuesday with uh, an area of low pressure lifting the upper air temperature briefly, but you know, bring rain with it. And then after that, maybe a little bit more unsettled from the uh, second week of the month towards mid month, but of course, that's a long way off and is therefore unreliable. Temperature anomalies from the 2nd to the 10th of August. A little bit above average for England and Wales, near and normal for Scotland and Ireland. Precipitation anomalies from the 2nd to the 10th of August. Drier than average for England and Wales, wetter than average for Western Scotland and Northern Ireland. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, everyone. Latest wind blow map from earthnoldschool.net. <coughs> There we go, that's better, I think. Uh, latest ripple about from Earth, nullschool.net. So we've got an area low pressure in the North Atlantic and quite an active weather system pushing in to the northwest. So that's bringing wet weather there for today. That rainbow will fizzle out tonight as it pushes across England and Wales. Might generate some heavy downpours in the southeast tomorrow, though. Check out the 6M forecast and more on that. Okay, so let's go through the chart data. This is how the latest UK Met Euro run. Is looking for big night on Monday. Area of low pressure in the Atlantic. Another weather system moving into the northwest, bringing outbreaks of rain. And then that gradually spreading southwards and eastwards through Tuesday. Could bring some uh, much useful rain to the south and southeast. And then beyond that, we go flat and westerly. So, um, you know, dry at times and relatively warm down the south. A little bit more unsettled at times up in the north. All looking rather westerly to the end of next week. I can't again with low pressure in the Atlantic on Monday. That will bring wind and rain into the north. That spreads south into us across the country through Tuesday to be replaced by uh, showery westerly winds through Wednesday and Thursday. 
and those westerly winds carry on to the end of the ICOG run of those. Just signs that high pressure is bridging up for the southwest air by midday on Friday. That could bring something a little bit drier and warmer into the south, maybe then. KMA again with road pressure coming in from the Atlantic uh, through the early part of next week. Then we're flat and westerly through the middle part of the week. Low pressure and sinking in uh, across the country. That gets the 14th of August, looking rather coolish and mixed up to the middle part of August with KMA. GFS Midnight Run, again, has that area of low pressure coming across the country Monday, Tuesday. We're quite an active weather front, might bring some rain into south and southeast. Then through the middle part of the week, drier and warmer in the south, but still quite unsettled. Up in the north, flat and westerly for Friday and into the weekend as well. Um, now, check this area of road pressure out just here. That's the tropical storm of a disturbance area we've just been looking at, I think. This area of low just there. Um, now, that gets caught up in the jet stream. Gradually moves our way as we head towards day 10 to possibly bring a spell of wet and windy weather sometime around day 10 or 11. And then after that, with that high pressure to the south, and low pressure to the north again, before high pressure perhaps builds a little bit more strongly, we start to drag up some very warm air from the south. Remember, that was a bit of a warm outlier, though, in the latter stages with the GFS ensembles. The GFS 6 head run is all much of a muchness through the early part of next week, with wet weather spreading across the country and outbreaks of rain uh, with it. Then the middle part of the week, a little bit dry and warmer in the south, but still quite unsettled out to the north and the west. Again, there's that low there that could well be tropical storm and or hurricane. And the GFS 6N also gets that uh, mixed up with the jet stream and brings it towards us. Arrives around day 9, 10, a little bit earlier, but again, brings some wet weather in from the Atlantic there. With that feature, quite interesting. And then beyond that, we just go rather cool and unsettled, really, with low pressure seem to driving. So a different end to a 6 head run compared to the midnight run. Uh, a lot cooler and, and a lot more uh, mixed there. If you enjoyed the video, please you like, share and subscribe. Make sure you do that. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Weather Vids and get them to subscribe to me. Thank you so much for doing that. We need to put on 90 subscribers to get to 18.7k. So if you could give us a sub and tell your friends and family to subscribe, that would be awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. GM brings up this area of low pressure in off the Atlantic through Monday and Tuesday with quite a bit of rain possible with it. Then that pushes through Wednesday. By Thursday, we get another little ridge building to the southwest. And then, again, there's that uh, low, but it's the remnants of a tropical storm, I think. And uh, that gets caught up in the jet stream. We go into a rather cool and showering west northwesterly flow then for days 8, 9 and 10 with that low pressure containing, containing the remains of the tropical storm to the north of Scotland. And then finally, the ECM once more bring that uh, weather system across the country through the early part of next week with some outbreaks of rain with it. Then we go to north-south split, mostly warm and dry in the south, a little bit more unsettled, cooler up in the north. And a different ECM run, we do get that area of low pressure in the Atlantic, but it kind of stalls around Newfoundland, and we build this uh, little ridge here, down to the east country, which actually starts to pull up some quite hot air from the uh, south. If you look at the upper air temperatures, we are very close to getting some extreme heat again from France, moving our way, as if we have got the plus 15 south ice firm from England and Wales. I suspect that's probably a warm outlier, but you never know. We might get another shot at some uh, very hot temperatures uh, in around a week or so's time. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run for a on shower conditions pushing across the country through the early part of the weekend. Then we're drier in the south, but rain in the north and the west. And that weather system comes across the country Monday to Tuesday. could bring some wet weather even into the south and southeast. Uh, there we go, drier in the south, but still some showery bursts up in the north. That's how we look as we get to day 10. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today. Four day 10 gets us to the 12th of August from the Icelandic Met Office. 15 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure over south of the east country, drawing up the wind from a warm 
or possibly even quite hot southerly direction. But 10 with low pressure to the northeast, high pressure to the west southwest. That brings the wind in from a cooler westerly direction. Another 10, low pressure to the east, high pressure to the southwest. That's flat westerly, a little bit cool and showery. 8 with low pressure in off the Atlantic. That looks quite unsettled and another eight with relatively deep low pressure over top of the country winds in from the northwest that's going to be cool and unsettled as well so whilst the majority option it's actually the hotter option but we saw the operational run uh day 10 this option 15 go for that if you put the 10 together with the 10 together with the 8 together with the 8 actually the ecm ensembles whilst differing slightly in the placement of the area of low pressure are actually favouring a cooler and more unsettled outcome at day 10. And then in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It will get us to the 17th of August, 17 members of the ECM ensembles with, ensembles with low pressure over Scandinavia, high pressure to our southwest, winds coming in from the western or western direction, cool and showery conditions maintained. Another 12 with high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. That's going to be drier and a bit warmer as well. 11 with low pressure just to our east. Winds coming in from a cool northwesterly direction. And the final 11 with low pressure to the east, high pressure to the west. And again, winds coming in from a northwesterly direction. So all looking a little bit mixed, I have to say. We might get another portion of appreciable warmth, but... Generally, all looking a little bit mixed if we, you know, um, as we go through the, the data here at the moment. We'll see. Right, well, let's have a look at CFS for September then. So, uh, first time I've looked at this. And um, this is a bit of a shocker, actually. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, 700 mil bar height anomaly for September. Remember, these do change daily, but today's idea is to get some high pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland and place a trough of low pressure over top of the UK and Ireland. That will bring the wind in from quite a cool northeasterly direction and will be unsettled as well. So the temperature anomaly shows no signal, but I reckon that could be a cooler than average September. And the precipitation anomaly doesn't show much signal either, but I would be too surprised if we got a wet September out of that so it looks like the cfs could be going for a cool a wet september here it could be but it's a long way off so just have to wait and see uh right okay i forgot to get my sub diff up so there we go that's how unwell i'm feeling at the moment but uh there we go we're done if you enjoyed the video please you like share and subscribe and show to everyone for doing that drop a comment let us know like think about this and all of our videos and content don't forget to tell your friends about gals well as get them to subscribe to and we thank you so much everybody for doing that i'll just tell us happening on the channel over weekend tomorrow we're gonna have a six day uk weather forecast have a weekend forecast the ec 42 day and there'll be a 10 to 14 day as well sunday we've got again the 6 a.m forecast we'll do our next autumn update which is update number seven and we'll be live hopefully as long as the voice doesn't completely go i don't think it will but hopefully we'll be live at uh, 6 p.m on sunday we'll take the 14 day and as it's a sunday live stream of course we will throw in plenty of long range on that one as well you enjoy the rest of your Friday. I'm off for a gargle. <laughs> and uh, for this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.